let you do. Oh, oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody knocking at your door. The quilters of Guise Bend are descendants of slaves that worked for the Petaway Plantation. The slaves became sharecroppers after the Emancipation Act, but afterwards were on the brink of starvation during the Depression. When the debts of the landowner were called in, food, crops, animals, everything was taken away from the community. With the help of the government, the land was split into small farms and sold to the families. The women of Guise Bend never gave up, they became more resourceful, and this tight-knit community worked harder. It was really hard when I was growing up. We had nothing but the fireplace and the stove and the kitchen to keep warm. And we had to make quilts to keep warm. For houses, they were not insulated as houses are now. That's where the quilts come from. You know, they made the quilts to put on the floor because we had to lay on the floor. We didn't have no bed to lay on. So mama had to make quilts. I like old material. I like khakis. I like jeans. I like gangnam shirts, corduroy, but new material. I don't like new color. It's too hard to work with. I like something that's warm, a lot of love, and a lot of softness. I make a quilt by this side. And I say, oh, I don't like this. I cut, and I cut, and I take loose until it gets to suit me. We tell y'all our story. We don't be telling for nobody to feel. We don't want you all to feel sorry for us. We just be telling them to let you all know what God had brought up from and what he, what he doing for us and how he had opened up doors and made ways for us. Jesus being is on the map now. I think it would be a quilt. Knowing something about the artist in general makes us think we might have insight into their art. Sontag talks about how we should not criticize art on whether the actual form is aesthetically pleasing. We should expose the emotion the art causes the critic to feel. What does this make us think of? What does this make us feel? When an artist makes a contemporary quilt such as this, the artist's intention is silence. We have to find our own definition. The artist is so removed from the piece that there is no intrusion of their intention. We experience it for ourselves. 
we make up our own minds. These are the ways we think about fine art. This is how we talk about paintings and sculpture, so why not quilts? So to answer how would quilts fit into the world of fine art, we turn to philosopher George Dickey. He talks about a bundle of systems, art systems such as theater, painting, sculpture, literature, music, etc. Within each of these systems exists the institutional background as to what is needed to be in that domain. There is no limit to the number of systems that could be placed under the generic conception of art and there is no limit to the number of subsystems under the major systems, and so on. Dickey states these features of the art world provide the elasticity whereby creativity of even the most radical sort can be accommodated. With the passing of time, any subsystem or addition may someday develop enough artists recognition or familiarity to become its own system and rise up to be recognized without the aid of the standard label. But I decided to try to find my own identity in quilt making. So I say I make something with hot pink and I make something that's kind of easy but I'll put a twist in it. And so I decided to put a triangle not quite into the center of the quilt, but off to the side and kind of like a window. I love looking out of windows. I always have since I was a little girl. And I said, and this is kind of like looking back into my past. Looking back into the past, but not quite going all the way back into the past. They didn't know nothing about no art. Didn't know what art was, and they couldn't teach us nothing about art because they didn't know. Only thing when we have our quilts hanging on the wire fence, just like these quilts hanging now. A set of people from Sodom would come up here and see our quilts. We'll go down there and see their quilts. It wasn't no museum or uh, nothing of the kind, but we just enjoyed one another quilt, seeing them hanging on. And now we can see our quills hanging up in the museum. Oh boy, don't that make me feel so cool. Every time it come through there, that color be coming out through there, it be so beautiful. And when they finish with it, I say, wow! <laughs> and that print, I name still have joy, tears of pride. I never used the word pride. And that was something to be proud of, that these prints was going to be hung in embassies around the world. Me, Lou, somebody with really low self-esteem, somebody who never believed in themselves. And now here I was asked to join a the world of artists that share that great honor. And if you want to do so, you could do. It ain't nothing we can't do if we want to do. And I believe that to my heart. Many miles away lies your dear old mother beneath the whole place. Memories of returning of her tears and sighs. If you love your mother. 